So just 50 years ago, the population on Earth was twice as low as what it is today. Moving from 3.5 billion people to 7.5 billion people means that all of us, all of us who have appeared on this planet for the last 50 years, we need to eat. We have this primal urge. And bees are very much responsible to feed us. Why? Well, the agricultural sector is trying to consolidate and modernize in order to keep up with the growing demand for food. But during this modernization, one very key system element was neglected, and that's the pollination of the honeybees. We have pretty much centered our whole agriculture around this very easy to manage pollinator. But having the troubles with uh, taking care of our honeybees is actually leading to a very nasty trend. Bees are dying. We rely on them to, uh, to produce or to pollinate 30% of all our food. Yet in highly industrialized regions around the world, we are losing 30 to 50% of all the bees. So in 2015, uh, being an engineer, I decided that there should be a feasible technical approach to mitigating this trouble. So we introduced a sensor-based device called the BeeBot, which essentially allows the beekeepers to monitor key parameters of a honeybee colony from a distance and provide better care for it. Essentially, this lowers the 50% mortality rate among the honeybees to as low as just 5%. And we're growing this company currently, selling on five different continents. We are trying to help out, bring sustainability in the agricultural industry. But there still is one key problem. Today, pollination has become a service. Farmers in California, for example, are contacting beekeepers as far away as Florida or New York to bring over their bees and provide the service of pollination. And the problem is that the bees are actually not used to that. They're not used to spend five days on a truck being moved from Florida to California. And as a result, we're losing them. So we're helping the beekeepers to get data on their bees and know how and when to react in order to mitigate their losses. And here's where the blockchain came in. We started playing around with this concept about two months ago, thinking there should be a way for farmers and pollinators, the beekeepers, to get in touch and make use of a transparent and efficient system that is based on trust. So why am I speaking about trust here? Because when you're losing 30% of your bees, moving them from Florida to California, when you arrive in, uh, in California, you actually tell the beekeepers, so I moved 1,000 beehives, and you're going to pay for all of them. Little did he know that the, the farmer actually opens up some of the beehives, and they're empty. Bees are not there. So there's no trust between those players. And we decided to use the blockchain in order to create a smart contract kind of uh, marketplace that allows the farmers and the beekeepers to uh, uh, exchange value. And this is all being validated by our technology. So the very interesting part in our presentation is that we actually figured that we don't really need funding for this right now. That's the, that's the zinger. We are not going to build something that is uh, neither here nor there. We are actually de delivering the marketplace uh, later this year. But the thing is, we want to onboard customers and we want to make it efficient before we actually push the blockchain on it. Because in order to achieve true decentralization and use of the blockchain, we actually have to have uh, a great penetration of more technologies like the BeeBot, like what we are currently saying, selling. So uh, the, the key findings during our experience with Eternity for the last four, uh, five, I think, weeks is actually two things were very peculiar to me. 
So the first interesting finding is there something called CryptoKitties. And it's pro probably the most successful use of blockchain yet, where you actually breed digital cats, right? That, that was very peculiar to me. But the other thing is that the blockchain project, the blockchain business, is as hard, if not harder, as building a normal business model in which you actually have to continuously onboard customers and prove that you're bringing value to the system. So we are going to develop the, the blockchain marketplace for beekeepers and farmers, and we're going to launch it on, uh, in February next year, where actually most of those contracts take place. And then we're going to return to you guys and speak about the potential uses of blockchain in uh, agriculture. So thank you. And happy to answer some questions. Any questions? Yeah, I guess not, no investors here, yeah. <laughs> so right. I'm very happy that uh, at least we had one of the teams who uh, understood that maybe it's not time, the right time mm -hmm. uh, to do so. But thank you very much, Sergey. Thank you. Thank you.